Hey, welcome to episode four of Attempting Lead Man. My name's Rob. I also go by Training for Ultra and really appreciate you checking this out. Thanks for subscribing, hitting the like button. Just really appreciate you guys doing that. So we just did Silver Rush 50 mile race. It uh, it started off a little a little rough. Um, showing up three minutes before the start is not ideal. That's not a relaxing way to start a, an ultra marathon of this difficulty, or any ultra marathon for that matter. If we could just free ourselves of our perceived limitations and tap into our internal fire, the possibilities are endless. I'll tell you about it when it happened in the race, but to be honest with you, it happened even before the race. It happened in the training. A great cause. Oh, thanks. I respect that, man, so keep doing what you do, it, man. Keep us firing. For all you kids out there, stay safe and stay strong. Hey, everyone. It's the Train for Ultra podcast. We've got Jurek here. I was physically totally wrecked. I, I had nothing left. I figured I might as well move as quickly as possible towards the finish line if I was going to be moving towards it anyways. How do you even do that? I decided if I could, you know, finish a 50-miler, I could probably run across the country. 100 miles is not that far. Normally, try not to get to the race three minutes beforehand, but uh, it is what it is. I think I'm getting a reputation for being almost late to races here. But beautiful morning, probably overpacked with stuff. Excited to finally have a longer race. And I've gotten used to Dutch Henry Hill. Um, it's 200 feet, it's how Silver Rush, either the mountain bike or the run, start. And so, you know, there's not that much extra oxygen at 10,200 feet. I've gotten accustomed to just your lungs kind of burn at the beginning and you're out of breath more than normal. Uh, interesting part of this race was mile four, I look over and a guy goes, hey, nice shoes, man. And it's, uh, it's Dave Mackey who, legendary ultra runner, um, super nice guy, lost his leg in a, in a freak rock accident in Boulder, Colorado. Just this nicest guy. And when I saw him running next to me and I know what he's capable of, I ratcheted things back. I slowed down immediately. Um, I told him, you know, hopefully we can catch up on the podcast sometime. And yeah, it was an eye opener that Maybe I was pushing it a little too hard to start with, so I ratcheted things back. And as opposed to the marathon, when I didn't want to socialize at all, you know, there was a lot of this race where, you know, I was chatting and it was just fun to, to catch up with people. It's been so long since I've been able to do that. About eight miles in. Feeling a lot better than the marathon, obviously. Um, still gonna be a long day, I'm trying to stay patient. But just talking to a bunch of people, having fun, trying to enjoy this. So I had a gel within the first hour or so, maybe two gels, 
I just didn't want to eat food. I, I don't know if it was taking in a little more dust in my lungs than I wanted to, but I kept feeling like dehydrated and I, my lips are still chapped and dehydrated. For some reason, I don't know what it was this year, but I felt like I didn't really want to eat. Maybe it was the altitude. And so I came into the mile 14 aid station after the first big climb and had a Coke, which is really weird for me, but I did half water, half soda, and it, it got me going, but I was also utilizing sugar kind of out of the gates. Anything? Water? Uh, no, thank you. Enjoy your videos, man. Thank you. Um, do you have glasses for this? Oh, yeah. Head up, cup. You want Coke? Yeah. Thank you. 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 you. never finish Silver Rush and feel like that was an easy one, you know, on to the next one. But I had an added complexity here of having bad water 135 on the horizon next week. I'm pacing and crewing Dion Leonard. And so in the back of my head, I didn't want to absolutely hurt myself or, you know, blow out my quads or something to that effect. So my game plan for this whole race was hold back until mile 40. Like you can pick it up here and there, but wait and then wait a little longer. Uh, not gonna lie, I'm struggling. We probably got over, I don't know, maybe about 5,000 feet of gain. So this is one of the harder climbs for me at least. Mile 18, you probably have about 5,000 feet of gain on your legs. And uh, it's right where you typically would bonk during a race. So it's hard. Look at that view though. Wait until you're done with the fourth climb. Because this race has four different climbs. Each are about 2,000 feet of gain. And so you go out and you go back. First 25 miles you have about 4,000 feet of gain. And I've learned over, over the years of ultra running. This is... So, was my 29th ultra and you have to hold back and be patient what's up courtney hey how are you good how are you <laughs> but i was right on pace and that that soda like actually kept me going and, and I was in a nice little groove. I tried to pick up the pace cause I ran out of water. And so I kind of gunned it into the halfway mark a little bit faster than normal. And so I got in halfway around five hours, which for me is right on target. You know, a 10 hour Leadville 50 miler, Silver Rush 50 here. That would, that would build a lot of confidence. Um, perfect timing because my legs started cramping up, but I can see it right now. I haven't been this excited for any position in a while. I'll be back to when I was running 200. So, approaching mile 30. Uh, this would be the the third big climb of the four um, spectacular views and it's been nice to be able to see a bunch of people you know passing whether i'm passing them or vice versa um, but yeah this is this is difficult this is the third climbs when you're for me I'm seriously questioning myself as a runner and it, it always happens at the top so I just 
I'm a downhill runner. I'm not very efficient on climbs. I need to probably work on it a little bit. So it's also hard because they all, all four of the big climbs go up to 12,000 feet. But we're gonna get this done. That's the third climb. I know I am pretty happy to just have one last big climb in this race. So I think less than 20 miles to go. And uh, we have yeah, 6,000 feet of climbing. All right, it's about 34 miles in and around seven hours, 7.15, which it's nearly, I mean, my marathon I took so conservatively, but I nearly did uh, eight more miles, seven or eight more miles, same amount of time in the marathon compared to today. So I'm gonna be thankful and just try to finish reasonably. I'm not gonna try to do anything stupid because I do have to pace bad water next week. Again, everything was going according to plan other than maybe the diet was a little off and I wasn't eating. And normally I'd take down watermelon, pickles, that sort of stuff, but the aid stations didn't have that. So that kind of threw me for a loop there. I didn't know, I, I didn't know what to do. And so I kept falling back on like Coca-Cola, half water, half soda, kind of mix it together just to get some calories in me because I knew, you know, the climbs were intense. I was breathing harder than normal. My heart was working harder. Like I had my caloric burn had to be higher. So there were occasions where my calves cramped up a little bit. That was mostly in check, but it kind of freaked me out a little bit too, because I'm not used to that. And so I, I overall it was going pretty smooth and again I hit the second to last aid station there were no pickles watermelon just none of my normal routines were there I didn't have crew I didn't eat really anything there and that was I think it was 16 to 18 miles to the finish line one last big climb and I did everything I could to keep a brisk hike pace and be conservative until I got to the top of that fourth big climb. So, to be honest, that climb absolutely sucked. Uh, glad to get it done, but oh man, it took everything out of me and everyone else. It I'd do the same one. And I made it up there and the wheels fell off. Totally, totally fell off. I bonked like it was a 200 miler type bonk or a 100 miler. It was ugly. That was unexpected. The wheels just totally came off. Uh, right after the fourth big climb, uh, I started bonking for probably two miles at least into the aid station and uh, just sat there kind of in utter, utter pain trying to figure out how to solve the problem. I think it was the caloric burn, only having three gels, some perpetuum, and the only thing besides that was electrolytes. And that's, that's not how you run an ultra. I mean, it's an eating competition with some running is the joke. And yeah, I dropped the ball. I, I didn't eat. I didn't have any backup plan. I just didn't feel like eating this whole race. And so I paid the price. I bonked so hard into that last aid station. I didn't sit down on rocks. I kept walking somehow. But for two miles, it was like a death march. And it was warming up. I was getting dehydrated. Shit was hitting the fan. It was, it was ugly. And so I walked into that aid station, nicest volunteers there. They wanted to help everyone. I looked over and a female ultra runner was throwing up in the bushes. And I just sat down and was like totally out of it. Um, 
I didn't really have much energy to even like get out a GoPro or, or anything. I actually laid down in the dirt behind the aid station, just, you know, pity party, feeling bad for myself, just feeling sick. And I'm not going to lie, DNF was going through my head. And I was like, this is tantalizingly close. Seven more miles to go. They didn't have any food. Um, they had like crackers and dry stuff, potato chips. And I just was like, no, like I, I don't need any of that. And so I had some ginger ale just cause I was like, it'll help my stomach, some calories, but the sugar was just so overwhelming that I ended up going behind the bushes and puking. First time I can really recall in a race having a small volume of, you know, throwing up and all of a sudden I felt good and the aid station guy who was helping me out nicest dude in the world fills up my two water bottles and I knew I had seven miles to go and he's like do you want any food and I just nothing looked good to me and so I just put my head down and, and started walking and running and um, running when I could and also being super conservative knowing that the last however many 10 miles I hadn't really had any calories at all it was it was ugly it was ugly like there was smoke in the air so I don't know if the smoke was affecting my stomach and oxygen Combin there was just a combination of things that went wrong during this race but in the end I made it up you know you can hear the announcers you have about half a mile to go you go up this climb around Dutch Hunt Henry and then you drop down and you basically cannot be on two feet and not run into the finish line because it's such a downhill like ski slope into the finish quarter of a mile from the finish one of the hardest finishes of my life once again um, smoke in the air Made it just really difficult to breathe. Oh, I haven't eaten anything in this 16, 17 miles. Just thankful to get this done. This easily could have been a DNF. Right around uh, seven miles to go. I spent almost a half an hour in that aid station. I wanted to hang out at the finish line and like catch up with friends and just have a beer and enjoy it and I ended up just going immediately I got a alcohol free beer chugged it because I knew it had calories in it and uh, yeah tried to recover tried to get some food in me because it would just it had been hours and hours of of like grueling activity with no no nutrition at all so lesson learned I'd rather bonk through the end of the 50 than bonk this hard at the 100 miler with 50 to go I was definitely under trained for this race and I did a lot of things wrong and I'm glad to have gotten the finish out of the way I'm glad I didn't miss an aid station. I'm glad I didn't give up at mile 42 or whatever it was, 43. Um, things could have been a lot worse. No injuries at all. So, and my recovery is going really well. This is just a day after. And I'm ready to pace Badwater. I'm ready to help crew Dion. And my next big race is the 100 mile bike. The race across the sky. 100 mile bike race in Leadville coming up in August and then the next day I have to run a 10k so that's going to be painful I'm sure you'll enjoy watching that but um, highlight of my race was so many friendly volunteers 
so many just friendly ultra runners saying hi catching up with friends seeing courtney out there that was cool she was supporting everyone and just generally that was a big crowd for ultra running that was a really big crowd and it was fun it was refreshing to see excitement in ultra running firsthand again it's been way too long i can't wait for this 100 mile bike this 10k run and then finally my dream race the leadville 100 mile run i've been dreaming about this since before i was an ultra runner and i'm finally going to be in position to run it do i have a lot of training to do absolutely i'm not a high mileage guy but um i'm ready for it i'm super excited and i can't wait to bring you along for the experience so thank you again for liking this really appreciate everyone that's subscribing to the channel and just can't wait to hopefully inspire you and and take some of the fear off doing these races and Leadville's no joke and you earn every finish I've earned two I got three more races that I have to finish to become a Leadman and just really appreciate you guys thanks for checking out this video